You know this, I'll mention it again, that every performance, every show of the 44 shows that we are recording will be up on Nikon Live's website. So if you grab a schedule here or check out online what the schedule is, you can go back and see any of the programs that you have missed up to this point. So, are you ready, Ms. Lackey? Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce back to the Nikon Theater stage, Nikon ambassador and incredible photographer, Tamara Lackey. <laughs> We're just going to kiss all day long. Yeah, why not? Oh my gosh, hi. Okay, this is gonna be a totally different talk if you just watched our panel. Um, very, very different talk. I'm gonna spend um, the next half hour discussing a combination of things. And um, we were just talking about the power of personal projects and a good amount of the focus and effort of personal projects can be very emotional. Um, can take a lot of time and energy and tears. And uh, what I'm going to kick off with today is kind of the opposite of that. In the beginning of 2018, I started a new project. That's going to be helpful. Uh, I started a new project, which was more for fun, which was going to be focused on photographing uh, all kinds of different animals with specifically a focus on being able to create just a fun, different look in normal, everyday situations. So in this case, I was photographing this gorgeous blue poisonous dart frog. Um, I think there's a way. Do you see this, this miracle right here, this dot on its tongue? That's a miracle because what I'd done is I'd set up this course of something like 12 different projects that I was going to be shooting. And they were all different animals in different environments and different kinds of experiences. And I wanted to shoot with different equipment. And here, this is the scope of what I'm shooting. I'm going over here. Where am I? There. OK. So this is the little guy. You see him? His name's Freddy. He's literally like tiny and poisonous. And we wanted to kind of mix this up and have some fun. I'm shooting this at the Natural Life and Sciences Museum in North Carolina. We set it up so that they'd give us this private space. We could set up a small studio work with our pick of some of the coolest animals, and then they'd be utilizing the images in their marketing and publicity and magazine. And so we gave him this little shower right here. You can see just non-chlorinated water on this foam core. He got very, very grippy, and we were able to get that magical shot where we have the water in his tongue and his eyes dripping down his side. We created this really cool reflective. This is just simply shooting with the D5 camera the 105 F28 macro, completely on the slick surface just because we put water on it, and shooting one-to-one -one macro. Changing the angle a little bit, making sure that he could do some surfing. Very fun. And then we pulled out the next animal. Has anybody here ever heard of an axolotl? I hadn't either. This is the axolotl. This exists, and this is real, and you can find these in the world. They're amazing. This entire series for me, it's, it's part of a segment called the Redefined Show, Animal Edition. So if you wanted to see all the films of it, you could just Google Tamara Lackey, Redefined Show, Animal Edition, and see these. But the idea was to find these animals that I wouldn't normally have access to and um, create environments for them. So here we have him in his little watery home. We put 360 degree of constant light around him to light up those gorgeous green eyes. And this up here, this is like his gills. And so when he breathes in and out, it moves back and forth like this fan. And so I just shot it with a burst mode when the, when the uh, gills came forward, and we got this image of him. Boa constrictor. I have never been a snake photographer before. I photographed a dozen different snakes this year, which was odd and pretty wonderful. Um, the goal here was to stack him in a way where we showed the depth and dimension. But again, with all these images, we wanted to keep a focus on expression. So we actually have him smiling, if you can tell right there, which isn't necessarily easy to do and somewhat terrifying, especially if you're shooting with a macro lens and you're used to shooting with a longer lens and you move the macro away and you realize how close you are <laughs> to this face. Oh, and the crested gecko. So I show you this guy because he's a great example of using one small environment, one simple lighting setup and just shifting the way I'm shooting. Um, I photographed him with the D850 and the 105-28 macro. If you guys haven't shot with a macro lens before, it's a fabulous little lens. It's uh, kind of one of the lesser priced pro lenses that you can use, and you can use it as a portrait lens, but also really incredible quality macro shots. 
But um, shooting right here with the light hitting down and jumping up on those eyes, scooching around a little bit. He licks his tongue, his eyes back and forth. Such a joy. I literally hit burst mode and have about 50 raw files of him licking his eyes just over and over again. My assistant's like, are we done with this shot yet? I'm like, why would we ever want to be? Um, this is the proximity to this little guy. I wanted to get one of him smiling as well. And we got lucky enough. Look at that detail in the eyes. It's extraordinary what's going on in these worlds. Next up, lemurs. I found out that Durham, North Carolina has the second largest population in the world of lemurs outside of Madagascar which was kind of stunning considering I live 15 minutes away from Durham, North Carolina, and had lived in Chapel Hill for 15 years and never known this. There's um, just tons of acreage do donated to Duke University to be able to study and keep these animals in a wild environment. So this is them all snuggled up because it's warm. There's about five lemurs here, if you can tell, shooting with the 105 lens. But look at this. This is what happens when the sun goes Goes, comes out from the clouds. He's not actually smoking anything. That's solar powered. They're solar powered. They basically exist. When the sun comes out, they open up their arms, they suck up all the energy, they come up to the sky, and then the clouds come back and then they curl it back up. Spent hours with these guys and they just did that over and over again. It was pretty amazing. This is shooting with a 70 to 200 2 8 lens. Um, butterflies are a pretty common uh, subject for a lot of people to photograph, but I wanted to try different lighting techniques in terms of using a simple macro, one camera, one lens, um, and bring out different lighting. Here, just using um, a simple filter to oversaturate the image a bit more. But here, using a pink strobe. So this is just using a gel, a pink gel, on the front of a strobe. Shooting against this birch tree in the back is a white birch tree. So the light, the strobes were directed to the tree, not to upset the butterfly, but this white butterfly then becomes a pink butterfly. If this is something you enjoy, enjoy doing, you can go to a local butterfly house or something. Trying something out new and different, bring along a 30 cent pink gel um, or any other color to play with is a lot of fun. This is an extreme close up of the already close-up macro shot of our butterfly. And this to me was amazing because I haven't done a ton of macro shooting of animals. And what I find is that you have these ecosystems that exist within these animals. This, this wing has skeletal sections. It's got all these incredible different colors like paintings and butterflies live two weeks. You have two weeks and you have this magnificence and you barely ever see it because it just flits on by. There's these little miracles flying around us are insane. One of the other um, efforts I was trying to do this past year in terms of photography is just do more things that made me uncomfortable, like photographing this giant fighting beetle, which I didn't think much of because we were in a controlled environment. It was fine. They just put him on my hand. I'm going to take a macro shot. But when they went to try to take him off my hand, he dug in. And he dug in really tight, as if they couldn't get him off my hand. And when we were editing the, the behind the scenes film, we had to edit out my involuntary screeching because it's so uncomfortable to have them dig in and hold on. Um, and you can see here, this is the shot I wanted to get. That's him on my hand. And this is him just like sucking on my hand. So super uncomfortable, love the shots. We'll never ever do it again. Um, but really glad I had a camera that could get the images I wanted to get quickly. Alpacas are a new favorite planet, animal on the planet ever. Um, went to a kind of local farm that has alpacas running around with the sole intention of humanely getting their wool and making blankets and scarves and all that sort of stuff. And um, they are just the sweetest creatures ever. They're like little puppy dogs. And I got this image by simply wandering around with them, holding, at this point, this was a D850, holding it down here like this, using the tilt and touch screen, and getting their attention as I walked. Getting a shot, click, getting a shot, click. Um, it's one of the easiest ways to get a new look and feel from one of your subjects, is to hold the camera away from yourself and get their, them looking at that. I love those eyes. Um, I also found the two cute, the biggest, couple 
kissing couple I've ever seen, which is, where am I pointing to? There, okay. These guys, these sweet, sweet hearts. I was out um, in the field really far away and I saw this happen. They're just nuzzling each other back and forth. And I literally put my camera on a super fast shutter speed and ran towards them, clicking, trying to get exactly this moment. Shooting at 2,000th of a second can really help. Um, the other thing is, my entire life I've wanted pet pigs. I really, really want pet pigs. My husband says things like, are six pets not enough? And they're not. But I was able to go to this woman's home, and she has pet pigs. These are mini pigs that have no longer um, been, remained cute and tiny. And many pigs, if you know, in the uh, rescue pig organizations, they are bought as these tiny little, tiny, I think they're called mini, mini pigs or um, teacup, teacup pigs. And they're meant to be tiny, but they grow to be 1,000 pounds. And so this woman adopted two of them, and they actually built out a whole floor in their home for these pigs to live and have their home environment. And I wanted to get a photograph of him, and I'm laying by their water dishes, and I'm literally laying in pig excrement, not, not knowing that until I got up. And um, the goal was to get a shot of him with the reflections in the water. So what we had was his mama come around and offer an oatmeal cream pie, which is his favorite food. He turned to accept it. I got this shot. That's just going from water dish to water dish. I realized when I took the first couple shots, I was shooting at a shallower depth of field, like an F4, because I was trying to get a really lovely shot. And then when I expanded that to like an F9, I was able to get that sharpness of that reflection. Oftentimes, just switching the aperture up can make a, such a big difference. That shot I took of the alpaca down here, same sort of image here at an owl cafe in Tokyo that I was fortunate enough to visit recently, holding the Z7 down like this, the tilt and touch screen, making a noise to kind of get his attention and stepping back. And lastly, one of the last pictures of my favorite ever outing was uh, going to Corolla, North Carolina. On the outer banks of North Carolina, they have 100 Mustangs, wild horses that just roam the beaches and the dunes and go back in through the neighborhoods and feed off the grass in people's yards. And we spent a day just kind of tracking them and hanging out with them. And even though I was lucky enough to get uh, closer up shots and, and get a lot of interesting feeding and interaction shots, this image to me reminds me so much of uh, a 50s color chrome kind of moment. This was shot with the 105-14 lens, very shallow depth of field of them just heading out of frame. So um, one of the things I love about this shot, and pretty much every, sh with the exception of the indoor images in the museum, nearly all the images are very light gear kit, as in I've got one camera, one lens, maybe a flash, and a mini tripod. This is one of the shots I took with exactly that setup. This is the top of the Dolomites Mountains, the Refugio. You can go hiking in the Dolomites Mountains in Italy, the Italian Alps and go hut to hut to hut for weeks, just staying overnight, hiking for a day, and going to the next place. And so when we did this, when we hiked up to this hut to stay overnight, I brought the one camera and the one lens. And the goal was to get there right before the sunset, which is exactly what we managed to do. It was really cutting it tight, because have you ever been hiking and tried to get somewhere or in any sort of time-dependent weather situation where you're like, the sun's going to set whether I'm there or not? And so you're just going as fast as you can and scrambling up and literally got to the top as this moment hit, which was pretty stunning. One of the other favorite travel photographs I've ever taken was actually not outside in nature, but it very much felt like it. It was here at the um, Sagrada Familia in Barcelona. Does anybody know this? It's, yeah, it's absolutely stunning. It's a cathedral that's 100 plus years in the building. Um, it overwhelms me. This is not a composite. This is a single shot as I walked in the door. Every image I'm showing you is a single shot. But I'm walking through the door, and that is the way this cathedral was built. It was meant to mimic outdoors and nature, the light and the color and the um, grand nature of our planet, all in this one environment. It's pretty stunning. So earlier this year, um, this is 2019, Earlier in 2018, I got a phone call about the new Nikkor Z7, the Nikon Z7 and Z2470 lens that were going to be coming out, the mirrorless cameras. Have you guys had a chance to try them out? 
They're absolutely amazing. I got a phone call that said um, they wanted some help building a campaign, shooting with the new mirrorless system. And uh, it would be taking place in Mexico, going into the Yucatan Peninsula, central Mexico, taking one camera body, one lens. We'd have to keep it covered and secret at all times because the camera hadn't been announced yet. And while we were there, um, in the very full amount of time we had, we shot everywhere and we put together a little film of that experience shooting with the brand new mirrorless system. What this new system represents for me is freedom. I get to wander around the crowds to have this very subtle camera that I can whip out from my bag or under my coat and have these incredible high quality images, but this whole mobile option. Hi, I'm Tamara Lackey and I'm here in Mexico shooting at multiple locations with the brand new Nikkor Z 24-70 F4 lens. And then your hand's very loose on the cup. We spent all day, morning to midnight, photographing portraits throughout the Yucatan Peninsula. So we'll even do something where you kind of like greet somebody. You're like, oh, hi. <laughs> That's cute. I love that. OK, so you guys are just in conversation. That's good. That's so good. That's so good. You are such a friendly bee. One of my favorite moments from this trip was a completely impromptu shoot with a giant fuzzy bee that just appeared. You are so pretty. See, this is your landscape. <laughs> You know, I was honestly hesitant about the depth of field I'd get with an F4 lens, but the way this bouquet feathers out is just so lovely. I was really pleasantly surprised. Okay, so I am in a legit cave, and I am shooting at only an ISO 1600, and I'm shooting handheld at 1 30th of a second. It's like on the ground, facing me at the high, but that it's, that it's coming right into the lens. It's amazing, don't change anything. Oh, this is so cool. I love this. I mean, like all of it. Look, look at these lights. These are good. You see? At the corner? Look, you see what time it is. Shooting both on location and shooting backlit can be a challenge for so many reasons. But I just consistently got these beautiful shots, and it made it so easy to just concentrate on the moment and have fun. You really can shoot very close with this. Ooh, pretty. Oh my gosh, these colors are stunning. This new system is going to make me a better photographer. It's going to add a lot more ease to my life. Oh, that's so cute. And it's gonna make shooting a whole lot more fun. All right, you wanna see these? I love these. Please don't take it away. <laughs> no! <laughs> Um, thank you. Shooting with the camera when it's in a beta mode means there's going to be like <clears throat> six, seven, eight upgrades to it before it's actually released. And they have to take it out of your hands before they actually release it. And I'd gotten so used to shooting with that everywhere. Um, it really was nuts because shooting, this is in Guanajuato, Mexico. This is just the colorful landscape that you would see looking out over the city. And everything is being shot at the time. I'm just handing over JPEGs because I didn't have the equipment to open up RAWs. They wanted the shots at the end of the day. You just shoot with the right settings in camera and hand them over and go on to the next day. And um, in the Z7 and the Z6, you can sh shoot like a vivid portrait mode, which is what I did here, shooting the vivid mode, which kind of in camera pops up the saturation a little bit. Um, I'm able to kind of hand it off and know that I feel good about it. This is like what I am now shooting with most of the time. I have a little satchel 
I've got my camera and my every single shot that you saw in that video and that I'm going to show you right now was with the Z2470 f4 lens. So it's all right there in this tiny little compact lens and camera that can sit in a little bag on the side and get this kind of 50 megabyte files out of it. Even, you know, this is the late day sun dropping, um, late afternoon sun going away. You've got this golden, lovely light. It's just held that well. Even these kind of odd colors and tones, these coral skies, this pink lagoon that we found in the Yucatan Peninsula, which looks like Pepto-Bismol, but that's not very good branding for the lagoon. Um, just this stunning natural color that you come upon and find. This image, this image is actually my favorite image of the entire campaign, which is saying a whole lot. This was standing at the top of Guanajuato, um, shooting down. And part of why it's such a beloved photograph for me is I know the technical details we were trying to nail for the campaign. Part of that was the dot light reproduction, the way the little uh, dots of light showed up in a frame when you zoomed in super close. Part of it, we were shooting at night. Um, I had no other equipment with me other than shooting at a 70 millimeter. We were bundling the camera covered so people around us couldn't see what we were shooting with. And from this image here, just cutting in, zooming in a little bit, this is the shot we had, cropping in. That's what we were getting, shooting from all the way back here in the dark. We're getting this level of quality. I'm shooting at 845. From this camera back here, where not only do you have all the highlights held, you've got the detail, you've got the stains on the building, you've got the cool tones, you've got the warm tones. This is all pulled out as a JPEG from the Z7. Um, the sharpness of this system, the mirrorless system to me, was a big surprise because this is shooting in an historic theater in Guanajuato. You have an architecture here that's gorgeous. It's laid out such a crisp, beautiful kind of setup anyway. So if you're shooting here on a tripod, um, keeping this really simple, you've got everything so striking, but you grab just a quarter piece of this frame and it looks like its own standalone image. That's when we talk about an image being held sharp to the corners, that's what we're talking about. This woman here, we met her and picked her up in a bar. Literally, we were out the night before thinking, let's add some portraits in. Um, I didn't necessarily want to hire in um, models from far away. We wanted somebody who had kind of a very similar look to the area. We leaned over and asked her if she'd be interested in joining us for some photo shoots, thinking, you know, there's no way she's going to say yes. And she's like, I'm on board, sounds great. <laughs> And then, so she spent the whole next day with us. She was wonderful. Um, what I loved was being able to showcase in this image right here was that you have a lot of softness, too. This is shooting at an F4. I'm a portrait shooter. I'm typically shooting at an F1.4 or an F2.2. This is shooting at an F4, but she's only a few steps away from that wall, and you see how soft and pretty it is. Um, even the way that light is bouncing against the wall, typically if you're shooting, you've got sunlight bouncing against the wall, you've got broken highlights. You've got issues you've got to deal with, and it's just very well handled. I mentioned this little guy, this bee, my favorite guy ever, carpenter bee, is what I found out he was, not like a horrible local animal that was going to kill us. But um, that uh, white hair, I couldn't figure it out forever, but if you saw in the video, it's next to a dog. I was taking the photograph, and those are dog hairs on this bee. <laughs> Couldn't figure it out till later. Months later, I was able to go out to Tokyo for the launch of this camera and speak about uh, my experiences of shooting with it. And this, I was shot this with a, a later production uh, version of the Z7, um, but this is handheld, so the vibration reduction in the new mirrorless cameras is so, so strong. I'm shooting this from here, handheld. I'm at one-tenth of a second, and take a moment with this exact setup to see kind of what I'm getting. Look at, like, from left to right, the words. You can actually read what they're saying. No tripod, you can see the trails coming through. The people are blurred, but you can actually see all the writing and read it as clearly as if I'm holding a tripod and taking a long time to get this shot. Same thing here, just facing the other direction. I've been using the camera a lot in my studio as well for work shoots. So, um, and this next one's like a typical portrait, and I'll show you exactly how I would set it up and use it with my existing lenses. 
in my studio in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. And I'm gonna be using a combination of lighting and gear to be able to do some in-studio portraits. So I'm shooting with the Z7, the Nikon mirrorless camera, and I am pairing it with my F-mount lens, one of my existing lenses, which is the 105-14 lens. And I can do that courtesy of the adapter that I am attaching to the Z-mount, which is a new mounting system on the mirrorless camera that allows me to utilize this new camera with all my existing lenses and get a really seamless experience. So this is the image I'm getting, pairing my 105-14 mount lens with the adapter, with the Z7. Kind of the same sort of work I would pull out in terms of if I were using my D850 or my D5, and I'm quite happy with it. Um, I'm also realizing that I'm able to use this camera kind of everywhere I'm going, and it makes it easier because in the past, when I'd be out and about, I photographed this gorgeous uh, Great Dane puppy, those beautiful blue eyes, uh, as a friend's dog in a friend's house. I actually did this for Nikon school. We did a class on photographing children and pets. But I had, you know, my camera, my lens, my flash, and my setup. Um, nowadays, I find that I'm getting these kind of shots everywhere I go, go so, so much easier because I'm simply having the camera on me all the time. I had a friend, these are my kittens, by the way. I just shot this the other day. Um, I find that I'm able to get images, you know, we're all photographing our food. The difference between using the Z7 that's in my bag exactly how my iPhone would be is um, I can pull a plate like this. This, by the way, I did a before and after of the exact same settings, of both with my mobile phone and with my Z7. The difference is I'm using it everywhere. I had a friend ask me the other day, um, say, I know you're using this camera a lot because you're using it with the campaigns and stuff, but what do you really think of it when you're not there? And I'm like, I am in love with this camera. I'm literally shooting with it every single place I go. And this last picture is a perfect example. This is a recent Tuesday night. I'm out with my family at a Chinese restaurant. It's late, it's very, very dim lighting in the, in the restaurant. I look over and I see my daughter over here, Anna Lisa and her friend, and apparently they're being Norwals, as you do with chopsticks. I looked over and happened to catch this moment. Um, there's no way I'm getting the shot with my mobile phone, not quickly and not blurry and really badly pixelated. And I'm certainly not gonna set up a tripod and a camera and get that whole scene. But I just put my camera on the end of the table. This is about a third of a second. It's an extremely shallow, extremely uh, slow shutter speed. But again, that vibration reduction does it. And I've got the shot that to me is going to last a long time and mean significantly more to me over time than some of my most pro shoots. So I'm very grateful for that. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate your attention. OK. Mr. Kionis.